Hello and welcome to Manga Tour 96 and today we have the review of One Piece Manga Chapter 1044 titled Warrior of Liberation. After two weeks of waiting where a lot of people suddenly became experts in rubber with real rubber experts coming out of the woodwork all in order to figure out what the hell is happening with Luffy and his Delfruit. And after two weeks of theorizing the end result is everybody was wrong. Maybe there was someone who hit the nail on its head but that was overshadowed by the other theories that the majority of the fandom gravitated towards. Which in the end proved to be completely wrong. So what was the correct answer in the end? Well Luffy is still made out of rubber but that's just a part of the fruit's power. In reality Luffy was always a god that had a rubber body. Yeah Luffy isn't a chosen one, Jesus or a messiah's character but rather an actual god which makes the fight between him and Tanel even more funny as it wasn't a fight between lightning and rubber but a fight between a delusional self-proclaimed god against a true god who wasn't aware of what he is and still isn't aware. I wouldn't put it past Luffy that he won't realize what he actually is until the story ends. Now let's save all that for later and start at the beginning of this week's chapter. On the cover this week we have Niji and Yonji who are left at the mercy of some of Big Mom's children who will try to get to the bottom of the German science by dissecting Niji and Yonji. Those two are in a lot of trouble so it will be interesting to see who or what will prevent them being dissected like a frog in biology class. Going into the chapter we are with Zunisha who by the looks of it didn't move an inch since chapter 1037 as it's still in front of the garment ships and outside Uwano. The beginning of the chapter is also filled with Luffy's speech bubbles as he can't believe that he can get back up after taking the L from Kaido. Even he admits that he lost that clash but he also wonders why he feels so much fun despite of it and he starts to laugh uncontrollably. You can always say that this laughter is because of the fun and joy that Luffy is now feeling. But looking from another angle, considering everything that happened afterwards, you could interpret that laughter as the laughter of a maniac. Which in all honesty, when we see Luffy's face in full view at the end of the chapter, it does give me the vibes of a maniac. I guess it's because of the eyes that I got that impression. Anyway. Momo and Yamato start to put the pieces together of what Zunisha is talking about. Then we get a page of several characters sensing that something is going on with Luffy on the roof. With the first one being Sanji who wakes up because of it. Kid, Lo, Hyogoro and even Marco sense the same as Sanji. With Marco trying to calm down Nami and Tama by telling them that Luffy is fine. After that it's finally time to reveal what Luffy's fruit actually is. The honor for that goes to the Gorosei who are talking about the fruit. In their conversation we will learn that if nothing else the Gorosei did have a high opinion of the bowler head guy. But the situation with Luffy's fruit was more important so he needed to sacrifice himself despite his worth in their eyes. Then it's finally the time to talk about the Gomu Gomu no Mi with one of the members stating that the government tried to get its hands on the fruit for the last 800 years but without success. It was like the fruit itself was running away from them. It was like the fruit had a mind of its own which is not something unusual for a zone fruit. After learning that the Gomu Gomu no Mi isn't a paramecia but a zone it was time to learn its true name and that's the human human fruit mythical model Nika. This was revealed to us in a beautiful double page spread where we see Luffy in silhouette with a full moon behind him looking just like the Nika image minus the weapons from chapter 1018. We also learn that Nika's body has the properties of rubber hence why the government renamed the fruit the way it did. With the addition that the user of this fruit can apparently fight in any way that he likes with the user's imagination being his limit which in turn makes people smile who see it. This does come true later in the chapter as the fight between Luffy and Kaido does get a bit of a Looney Tunes flavor. Which I'm sure won't be to everybody's liking but if there's any manga that could pull off having its main character fight like a Looney Tune then that's definitely One Piece. This is definitely worthy of being called 
the most ridiculous power in the world. Now, my first reaction to this wasn't at all good. As I said in the previous review, I really hoped that the true name of the fruit wouldn't be something like the Sun Wukong fruit, which in the end, with this reveal, did come true in a way. So I wasn't happy, but after taking a bit of time and thinking about it, I warmed up to this reveal and at this point I'm honestly happy with it. As first of all, with this fruit being based off a god that Oda created gives it an X factor on what it actually can do. So we can't really predict what powers exactly will Luffy with this player, like we could if the fruit was the Sun Wukong fruit. In addition, with Luffy calling this form his gear 5th, it's a confirmation that Luffy won't change his fighting style in the slightest, only that we got something new on top of everything, which would have happened regardlessly even if this fruit was just the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Also, with Luffy being a zone all this time, it explains some things where he managed to recover in lightning speed or the like. Also, it was brought to my attention that when you look at Luffy's moveset, knowing that it's actually a zone, his gears do look similar to Chopper's various transformation with his Rumble Ball, as opposed to something a Paramecia type could do. Which is not surprising considering that both have the same fruit, just a different model. In the end, I'm quite happy with the way this whole thing turned out. But I'm still waiting on the explanation as to why it took so long for the Gorose to notice this. If we can get a satisfying explanation on this, then I must say that Oda did a brilliant job on something that was a really risky move on his part. But until then he only did a good job in my eyes. Now let's move a bit away from this and focus on the remaining big plot thread open on Onigashima and that's Orochi's fate. We have a conversation between Orochi and Hiyori in this chapter, where Orochi tries every trick in the book in order to survive this. Their conversation naturally comes down to Odin, about the promise that Odin had with Orochi, in which Odin was the only man of his word who did what they agreed on, with Orochi being the sniveling snake that he is. When their conversation gets heated, Hiyori finally takes off her mask and her crying face is revealed. While this was going on, a fragment of the cousin Bo appears which immediately gives hope to Orochi that he could turn the table with its help, immediately revealing his true colors the moment he feels he has the advantage. Where the cousin Bo ignores his orders to burn Hiyori and instead burns Orochi himself. Now, at first I was confused as to why would the cousin Bo attack Orochi. Did Kanjiro had a change of heart in his last moment? or what is going on. So I found an interesting interpretation of this scene, which makes sense and that's back in chapter 1030 when the Kanzen bomb was created, Orochi did tell Kanjo and I quote, until at the very bottom of it all, you reach our burial crypt, only you can lay our souls to rest, Kanjuro. Going by this quote, it seems that Kanjuro took those words literally while Orochi was figuratively saying that Kanjiro should burn every enemy of the Kurozumi clan and that way all the members of the clan would rest in peace. Until it is proven otherwise, I'm going with this being a misunderstanding on Kanjiro's part as opposed to him having a change of heart. With Hiyori watching as Orochi is burning, it is once again time to go back to our captain, who is having the time of his life with his heart beating in the rhythm of throughout the fire and flames. He feels like he's at its peak and says that that is his gear fifth. After a very long time, we see Supreme King Saki being used to clear out the fodder, with Luffy Saki being so strong right now that he can knock out people who are down on the life floor while he is on the roof. Even Kaido gets shaken by this as he just isn't sure what's on the roof right now. Then we have a great double page spread of a giant hand coming down the roof and grabbing Kaido like some toy pulling him back up to play. We get reaction shots from Kit, Lo and Chopper, with Kaido showing us that the power that Luffy has awakened is indeed ridiculous with his eyes popping out like a Looney Tune while he is being dragged out. Outside the Looney Tunes shenanigans continue with Luffy using Kaido like a ragdoll. Oda definitely had a lot of fun while drawing those pages. As quite honestly, it is surreal seeing Kaido's eyes popping out of his head with him not knowing what is going on. With Luffy having a blast, 
Kaido had enough as he tried to make the situation more serious as it should be. But Luffy and Oda said no, and that those Looney Tunes shenanigans will continue. With Luffy turning the ground into rubber, at least something we're familiar with awakening. But this is where it ends, as Luffy uses this ground to bounce Kaido's bottle breath back at him. After that, we finally see the full design of Gear 5th Luffy. Body-wise, he is the same as usual, although he can change his body size at will now, like shown in the scuffle with Kaido. Steam is enveloping him similar to Gear 4. His hair changed. From afar, it looks like his hair is on fire. But on a close-up, that is not the case. His eyebrows change as well, looking more like Sanji's. The color of his shirt changed for whatever reason, and he entered the same eye club with Zunisha, Mihok and Imo. With Kaido apologizing about what happened previously, and Luffy saying that it isn't a big deal and that they should end this fight already. We end this crazy chapter. Now, while Luffy said to end this fight already, I don't think that it will happen just yet, as we are still waiting on the Kaido flashback. Also, one thing that I could see people complaining with this chapter are the Looney Tunes shenanigans. As manga readers and anime watchers are used to the cool power-ups, then something goofy like this could be a turn-off. To that, I can only say that the same was said when Luffy went for the first time Gear 4 Bound Man. There were a lot of people who said that Luffy looked too goofy in that form and yet it all quickly died down afterwards, as it will with this. As I said earlier, overall, I'm happy with how Oda handled everything about this Delfruit business. Where, if he wants an excellent grade in my book, then he definitely should give us an explanation as to why he took the Gorosei so long to figure this shit out. Apart from that, it will be interesting to see if Hiyori will do something or just watch and enjoy Orochi slowly burning to death. Also, where the hell is Denjiro? I thought that he would definitely show up at Hiyori's side against Orochi. But as things stand now, he won't be needed. So I'm really starting to wonder if he will have any role to play in this climax at all. Well, only time will tell what Oda does with him. All in all, this was definitely one of those chapters that will define this series as well, staying in people's memories for a long time to come. And that will be all for this video. If you like this video, leave a like, leave your thoughts in the comments below, or subscribe to the channel for more One Piece content as well as other manga content, and until next time, take care.